Previously on The Golfing Gamer and Crash Bandicoot Walt. I am Dr. Nefarious Trophy, master of time and the creator of the very time twister machine you see before you. Uka Uka and Dr. Cortex have sent me to end this little shroud, so you won't be leaving my area with the crystals. I swear it! realize that this time twister machine is very delicate without dr entropy's constant care and control who knows what it will do if that's the case you probably shouldn't send him in as a ringer then hey guys welcome back to the crash bandicoot warped walkthrough on the golfing gamer today we will be taking on warp room 4 and coco is the bandicoot up for the task at least the one i chose anyway so let's get into this with Stingsonator. So I'm fitting in an Egyptian themed warp room, we'd start with an Egyptian themed level. I have word I'd be collecting the crystal once more in this level, as the uh, gems require a different path to be opened once more. Also as a reminder from the last episode, we have now picked up the super spin ability, the first of the what I believe to be three overpowered uh, power-ups in this game. And hopefully, if I recall correctly, we'll see it in action at some point. There we go, right there. Very useful to get across large gaps and also for taking out enemies. I'm not worried so much about the timing of the spin anymore. I mentioned this before, but don't step into the lights. Step into the lights and the darts are uh, fired out of the wall. Hence why I take the... Uh, I say shortcut, it's not the correct word. Um, oh, hence why I use the uh, spin manoeuvre to get across that. I'm not sure it sounded like when I spun uh, that uh, minion away. Hit something else through the wall. I know there's another fork on the other side of the wall, so maybe it hits something over there. And yes, this can be an issue with the uh, super spin, whatever they call it, tornado spin. Uh, if you hold down the uh, spin button square for just a second too long, it just carries on spinning. And it's not very useful when you've got the explosive uh, nearby. You're trying to avoid spinning. Yeah, you want to just tap uh, square from this point forwards. I learned it the hard way. Always handy to have an extra hit to our name. I've actually gone invincible yet in this walkthrough. I don't think I have. Well, the mechanic that sort of became less and less, or more and more, sorry, difficult to actually obtain as the games went on. I swear that sarcophagus jump, just jumped through a box. This game does some weird things. Like that camera, for example, bloody hell. There's no point trying to uh, get the one through out of those boxes, just blow them up. I do decide to go for that life though, which you can get by double jumping over the TNT crate, just as I do. Of course, don't forget to go back to them. I'm going to be careful here. I think if you body slam too close to the crate, you hit the TNT crate as well. Let's make sure that Box 28 does explode, and it indeed does. 
So all good there. And carry on. And yes, I did jump through that box. Yes, the one was two hit enemies, so you destroy the sarcophagus in one hit and then take up the one with the second hit. Same with this though, I mean uh, you have to hit that monkey four times technically. A lot of, well, a few multiple hit enemies in this type of level. Well, I think that was actually it, yeah, I think it was just the two. Oh no, wait. No, sorry, you can get the uh, box crate. Box crate, the box gem. And that's how I missed out the four boxes at the beginning. So I got that level mixed up with another level later on. So yeah, what happened there was I skipped ahead to when I went back into the level, got those four crates, they're actually behind you at the beginning, which I forgot about, and then I cut ahead to when I finished level. And just then, uh, that was me getting the crystal, and then that. It's the scene we're on now, that was me getting the gem afterwards. A bit confusing, but um, there we got there. And then I had to find the level I was looking for, which is actually level 20, Tomb Raider. Uh, because I need to do something here before going somewhere else, I believe. Yes. Yes, sorry. I recorded this a while ago, it's coming back to me now. So we're going to get the blue gem here, so we can then go back to uh, Sting Senator to get the other gem. That's it, yes. To, to avoid further backtracking. I'm doing that now. As I record, do do it a bit slowly, unfortunately. So, apologies for that. Well, it's better, except for the fact that I kind of want to show... Like you told Mastery, you kind of want to show you're working. So, um, <laughs> no point rushing through this. I get incredibly lucky there, especially since I have that inability, which just about kept me alive. Yeah, this isn't too difficult, I, I'm just making it look difficult. Like my timing of the door then. So wait for the water to start going down, and then spin the cog to open the door. Otherwise you're not going to make it to the next uh, ledge. Uh, don't. Don't get stuck over the holes, don't walk over the holes, otherwise you will drown. As you would drown when the water rises. There we go. That is our, I believe, our third colour gem of the walkthrough. And it's blue. As I said earlier on, this will activate a path back in uh, Stingsonator, which we will be heading back to now, I believe. After a Coco dance, because I, I uh, deemed that worthy of a dance. Big Geminal. Because I had to come back in for the gem, I actually cut out me going across that left fork. What you will find down there is, uh, I believe it's three or four lives at the end, and it takes you back to where the uh, first checkpoint is, or just beyond that. I was going to include it in the backtracking segment to get this gem, but I kind of skipped over that in the end. I want to slide past those uh, lights, otherwise you'll get hit by a dart. Because I got lucky there, except the fact I did get hit by the monkeys. Uh, other than that, I got lucky to survive up until that point. There's going to be a theme for this path, actually. I do get a bit lucky going down it. You see that, I could easily lost control there, but I just kept going. I just about keep control of that. This path is definitely tricky. I get lucky here. I do the spin move and the door just about opens in time. Didn't want to take my chance to the snakes just jumped over that and grabbed the gem before leaving. Quite a short path, I just made it look long. 
There we go, that is actually, apart from the time relic, which I keep forgetting about because I haven't actually recorded that uh, bit of the game yet. Uh, for now we've completed uh, things later. Now we can enter a different kind of level. In the original game, this is one you can only play as Coco. It just uh, no, happened to be controlling her, so there was no uh, change of character there. In this level, as you probably guessed by the title, and as you can see me doing now, you've got to destroy the blimps. However, there are still boxes to take down as well, so make sure before you take down all the blimps to get all the boxes, otherwise you will just leave with the crystal. The crystal being awarded for taking down the blimps. There's 11 boxes here, and uh, yeah, I wasn't sure at the beginning how to dodge, although as you see now I am dodging. But thankfully, some of these uh, boxes, when you destroy them, uh, gives you some health back. It's a bit like in Fortnite, you do get like a second wind in this game. Should you find the right equipment? I kind of got a bit um, gun ho on the blimps to start with, and I almost ended up destroying the final blimp before I uh, rid the boxes. But luckily I realised before I left that I hadn't done that, so <laughs> got a bit lucky there. Yeah, this blimp. You can shoot down the other planes, but pretty much anyone they're going towards you. And then you're going to be too busy trying to dodge out the way of their um, bullets. So don't worry about them too much, but they can be a nuisance. I've never actually seen this before in the game, but I've seen the time trail, and this is based on how quick you can destroy the blimps. And I suppose some of these boxes would become time crates. Never really thought about it. I never actually got the time running in this level before. And technically, at the time of recording, I still haven't. I do get a hit there, but that's the only hit I've taken for quite a while, I believe. Making sure I got all the boxes there. I started checking it a bit more often towards the end of the game. There we go. Got the crystal and got the box gem. So we are done with this level for now. Boom. Boom. I'm not sure why typing on a laptop makes the gem appear, but there we are. We meet again. Uka Uka and Dr. Cortex want me to teach you a lesson. Well, I made a few modifications to my mechanics since our last encounter. <laughs> so back off or be deleted! To those that have played the game before, that wasn't really a surprise. And to those that haven't played the game or seen it being played before, I'm sure you're not surprised either, yes, Engine is the penultimate boss of this game, just as he was in Crash Bandicoot 2. And he's made more than a few modifications, I'll tell you that much, that's a, a spoiler for you, if you haven't seen this before. In the meantime, we're back to another level I don't particularly like, or well, type of level I don't particularly like, because the jet ski controls horribly. also hate these bits, you have to wait the right moment to go across. And also they actually made it a bit more uh, open uh, from here on out. So if you're not careful you might end up missing a few boxes. Possible foreshadowing though. I'll take our time a bit more on the ramps to make sure I do actually get myself lined up. Which uh, yeah, I understand that could be a little bit uh, boring to watch. But necessary if you want to uh, complete the game. You could probably do it a bit quicker than I am. That's probably too, too busy, too focused on trying to make this look good overall. I took my time too much.
Oh, that one in one go. Do I get this one too? Oh, I do. I'm definitely getting better at that. Alright, what we want to do here is make sure you go into each of these gaps, because there's a box here, and you can see there's a box on the other side as well. But each time you grow a box, you want to make sure the second boat isn't coming around. So it's probably best to grab the box and then just wait a few seconds for a boat to go past, and then carry on from there, like so. And then go crashing into the bomb. In front of that ramp. Yeah. Of course. That's what I get for dodging the bomb. Oh, come on. I'm better than this. I swear I'm better than this. Alright, lined up this time. Come on. Get them. Yes. Okay. Another nasty bomb placement. I probably could have gone there, but, um,. Didn't want to chance it, I, I, I guess. Too many eyes there. I think one of the things I don't like about this level is the fact that you can't actually attack any enemies on the jet ski. It's pretty much you just got to dodge everything. And you throw that in with dodgy controls and this becomes a really difficult level. Probably takes up most of the time in this video, as a result. I, I, I do aim when I make these videos, make them as short as possible, just keep it short and to the point, but... Uh, this one came out a bit longer, for, for reasons. You have to be careful there. The seagull is on a box, the seagull will attack you. That's why I uh, dodged that. I also fell for the fact you had to go up the other ramp on this side. Once you get the box, so the seagull goes away. I hope that all makes sense. I've got this ramp now to get the final box, like, like so. And that's all well and good. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to go off to the right there, which you just saw again. There's a few boxes over there. Uh, so yeah, that's, those things you got to watch out for. I'll do go and get them uh, in a minute. Unfortunately, I didn't actually do it in this run of the level. So that's once again... Uh, go back and do that. But don't worry, you don't have to watch that. I'll just show you what I do at that moment on the run. But we'll get to that in a minute. Those guys with the um, anchors aren't very effective, are they? This is what you do you put a bomb right in front of something that you. a collectible that you need to pick up. It makes it so much more difficult to get it. Got there in the end though. Luckily the crystal means we are actually close to the end, end of the level. So we are almost done with the jet ski. For now. To get the time trials and um, other levels. Ooh, on with that canoe. Have to do this a bit carefully because as you can see each of the rounds are lined up with the next line of bombs. And if you just keep going forward, you will hit them. So uh, go over the ramp slowly and try and pull over as quick as you can, otherwise you will run into them. And for God's sake, when you get to a ramp with boxes at the end of it, make sure you're lined up with the arrow. Don't do what I did several times. Watch out for the shark on that one as well. Now if you have all the boxes, that's actually the last box there, and then all you have to do is uh, ramp and get out of here. You know, I realised about the boxes, I didn't actually go all the way back, so I couldn't get all the way back, so I left with the crystal again and came back in to pick these up. I'm not sure what I'm waiting for here, because I don't think there's actually a box there, is there? No. I think I was trying get across most of the um, line of fire. You know, make sure that the, uh, if the um, cannons have stopped firing before you try to make that jump. And most of the boxes around here. Barely dodge the cannon fire again. 
decided to grab this box first because um, I knew I was going to be cutting at this point, so I could just then grab this, take a hit, then we go back to the end of the level, and this time we get the gem. Made that level much harder than it should have been, that's for sure. But Tell No Tales is no more for now. And I just hit my remote control with the mic, in case you wonder what that noise was, if you could hear it. Anyway, back to Tomb Raider. Clever pun, isn't it? Yeah, I get that because we're in a tomb. And there's a game called Tomb Raider. I don't know why I'm explaining that. But anyway, this time we are going to run through the level. Pick up the crystal and I do believe the box gem as well. Came all the way back when I just could have stumbled to the platform, but oh well. Unfortunately, the uh, rising of the water does actually slow us down a bit again this level. I should have just gone forward there onto the next platform instead I ran backwards again. Hopefully I go forward this time. Oh I do, I just forget to, <laughs> to jump on the TNT box. I could have cut about five minutes of this video I think, just by doing it properly. I thought I'd run backwards again. Sort of. So back to this platform now. Do more chance that when it ought to be arisen at any moment. <laughs> nice take out. Now I didn't say this earlier, but make sure you slide the guys with the shields, you can't spin them. And I believe you try and jump on them and just lift the shield up, so you can only slide through them. Or dodge them. You can dodge them too. Make sure you do get the box underneath the outline boxes before you hit the exclamation mark box. Otherwise, but well you can't get it at this point. You can actually get it with another power up, which we pick up at the end of this video. Don't want to spoil it, although I'm pretty sure everyone knows what it is already. Tries not to hit the exclamation mark box, even though it just makes uh, Nitro and TNT appear. Wouldn't make a difference anyway. I didn't know that at the time, and I was just making sure I did things properly. So I actually, I believe I do take these boxes out first. Ah yes. Yeah, so I just saw it come off my um, on the video itself. What happened there? With the power of hindsight, though, I knew not to destroy the boxes this time, and uh, made it cross the gap. So I got all the boxes. Just took me a couple, a couple of attempts to get there. Time in there on the clock. I could have, in theory, jumped on that bug and then onto the next box and across while the water was still up. By the time I would have got to the box, it probably would have gone down. Ah, uh, but I was being my usual cautious self. If you want to go through the level a bit quicker, you can do it like that. As long as you're above the... not touching the water, you're fine. And that was very breaking to that jump. That's what I've done so far. There's a death platform we took earlier on to get the blue gem. Of course we're ignoring that this time. Not sure why they put an exclamation mark box there. I guess maybe to catch people out. In case they it wasn't important. I think the non completion is the full foul of that though really. I just want to destroy everything. The dry land once again. I was double jumping there to make sure I didn't miss anything above the 
platform. You know, some of them had boxes right above them, like the one ahead. Make sure you slide through that guy if you do slide through him. Don't do it in front of the nitro. Otherwise, either he will hit the nitro or you will hit the nitro. Very nasty level, this one. Almost died there. Hopefully I'll take that out and keep moving. I do. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Pushing my luck there. Away we go again. Making use of the turbo spin. Thanks for taking out loads of boxes in one go. above just in case. Don't know why I did that but I haven't got to worry about him anymore. As you can see up ahead, the level ends here. And with all the boxes. No more repeats. For now. Which level haven't I done yet? I can't remember. Why have I done all of them? I think I have done all of them. I think it's just a very long boss fight. Oh no. Oh, sorry, it was a boss... Alright, okay. If it was a boss fight, the icon would have come up. We wouldn't be able to go to any more levels, so... I don't know why I thought we were going to be fighting engine now, but... We've got to go visit to the future first, and I do believe this time we can only get the crystal. Yeah. Hence why I don't get all the boxes. Let's pick up the old wampa fruit here and there. Don't spin the cameras when they're uh, down because they're actually in the force field there. You can spin them when they're uh, moving from one place to another. I'm not sure why Vicarious didn't put a bit more detail into the backgrounds here. I remember the original Crash Bandicoot walked. There's just so much going on in the background as well. I suppose it looks more dystopian though. Hmm. I'm on the fence about that. Don't walk into the track to be one of those spaceships. Uh, so you, I believe you can't spin them. You might be able to spin them. I don't think you can though. Just jump jump on them or jump over them. Now these things here, these fans, send you into a spinning frenzy. Which you know, can be useful, but not when you're near explosive, so watch out for that. This will come up later on. that camera to die a slow death there, for which I mean actually quite quickly. Don't know why I said slow. Here we go. Decided to just avoid it altogether. Let's give over the bonus room which makes this level considerably shorter. Yeah, for one thing, one thing only, and that is that crystal right there. Nothing else matters right now. Almost take a hit there, just about get away with it. That's going to be fun to deal with later on if uh, the fan doesn't get us up high enough to actually make the gap. There we are. Another five levels completed and it's time to face another boss. And originally this was uh, a Coco only boss. But again, the control of Coco so makes no difference. Doctor Engine. So, 
You want to go a few rounds? When this is over, we'll see who is obsolete. Somehow I get the impression it's going to be you. He has changed things a bit. Uh, same as before as in Crash Bandicoot 2. Destroy all the targets, fire missiles, and other uh, weaponry at you. And you will defeat him. Probably the only boss in these games does not actually take a direct hit from you. I find it best to start with the one in the middle because it's just constantly firing. Whereas there was any fire when the uh, when the uh, chambers are open. Just get as many shots as you can, you can destroy them pretty quickly, like that. You can only shoot the uh, machine gun turrets when they're up. Just as you can only destroy the uh, rocket launcher uh, dispensers when they're open. And obviously the machine guns are shooting, you most, shooting at you most of the time, so uh, try and hit it a few times before it starts shooting and then try and get the rest of the time when it's not. Like I'm doing. Sort of. There you go. One more to go. And we move to phase two of the battle, which is slightly different from the original game. So our little tiger friend joins us. That's a good addition, I think. Right, same again. Aim for the open port. That fires out these um, missiles, which you can't seem to destroy for some reason. You definitely destroy that. Go around and shoot what you can. Eventually you can pretty much destroy everything in one go if you've got enough shots into each and every bit. Well I'd suggest it's best to destroy the ones on the side first after you destroyed the one in the middle. Because again you can't destroy that weaponry. Right? You can only destroy the rockets. That's enough of Golf's Handy Guide. We say my goodbyes now, because we're almost done. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss out on future videos on the channel. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I will see you soon.